All right, shall we go ahead? Great, all right, so today we're doing something a little different. Um, our others have been kind of geared toward the job search directly. And today we're gonna do a little bit more related to career exploration and figuring out how you figure out what you might wanna do in your work. So, a little overview, we'll do introductions. And we're gonna introduce you to the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. We're gonna talk about the four type preferences. We're gonna do some fun, I think they're fun, interactive exercises um, to see what type is all about and then um, we'll talk about next steps. So first we'll do introductions. Amy Benedict, I'm the director of GSC Career and Professional Development and a proud alumna of our Higher Education Management Executive Doctoral Program. And I'm Allison Byrett, I'm the graduate assistant with GSC Career and Professional Development and I am a first year master's student getting my master's in higher education this year. So hi everyone, I'm the career peer advisor um, this semester and I'm now a second year master's student at the ISHD program, the Human Development program and I'm so happy to meet you all. And I hope you have a great time today. <laughs> so Christy is also one of our career peer advisors, so we've started a new program um, to give you more access to services and hopefully starting next week, although I have to find spaces for you all, there's going to be 14 hours of resume critique drop-in time available in addition to appointments, so stay tuned for that now. Okay, so how many of you have heard of the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator? One, two, three, okay, great. So um, have you ever noticed that it's easier to get to know some people than others? That you have friends who are never late? In fact, I have a friend who says, if you're not five minutes early, you're late. Um, but then you have people in your life that are always late. I have a, a cousin, and for family gatherings, we always knew he and his family would be late, and so we should just go ahead and start whatever they were doing. Um, and then there's other people, for example, that just have to have the last word in an argument, and other people that get kind of quiet and withdrawn from an argument. So the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator is an assessment that can help you understand yourself and others. So, give you a little history lesson. Um, actually, I got some uh, information that I had forgotten or, or didn't realize. So the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator was developed by a mother-daughter team, Catherine Cook Briggs, she's the mother, and Isabel Briggs Myers. And the assessment is based on the work of Swiss psychologist Carl Jung. Anybody remember Carl Jung from their intro psych class or somewhere along the line? Let's see a couple of a couple of heads. Okay, good, good. Or you can look it up later if you're interested. Um, and the assessment was first used during World War II. What I didn't remember is that they used it to figure out what jobs might be good for the women that were in the United States while the men and some women um, were off fighting the war. So they used it to figure out what jobs might be good for them. And so the Myers-Briggs is based on four preferences. The first preference is related to the source of, the, of energy for you, where you get your energy from. The second preference is for how you gather information. The third preference is for how you make decisions. And the fourth preference is for how you relate to the external world. And one of the things that's important with Myers-Briggs, there's not good or bad preferences. They're just different. Um, so that's helpful and important to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to give you, oh, do we, where do we want to have them do the assessment? I think so. Okay, I'm going to go back. Yeah. So, would you like to tell them 
yes. why we wanted them to bring a device. So, in the email, you might have noticed there was a little note to bring a laptop. Hopefully, everyone has one. Does everyone have one? Laptop or cell phone or something. Um, so, we're going to go on to 16personalities.com. That's 16personalities.com. Um, and take the Myers Briggs test. So, you can all find out what our Myers Briggs personality types are. And then we're going to talk about what that means and do a couple of exercises to understand the results. Um, but it's fun. After you take the test, 16 personalities kind of gives you a full assessment that you can go back and read after today's session as well. And it's free. And it's free. And, and then, then once you have your account, you'll also be able to dive in into even more detail in yeah. your life. Yeah. So we're thinking the assessment will take about 15-ish yeah. minutes. It's um, under 30 questions. So it'll ask you things like, how do you react to a situation like this? And give you a few options to choose from. Um, and you should try, try um, not to think about the way you would like to be or the way you think you should be. But when you're in a situation where you can just be yourself and answer the way you'd really like to, that, that you are, you'll get a more accurate result. Let me know if anyone has a difficult time getting the website up. Okay, so what I want to do first is take a little poll so we can get our group type, and then we'll go into a little more detail. So on uh, the E to I preference, where you get your energy, how many people scored E? Hold your hands up so I can. One, two, three, four. Four. And then I didn't count how many people are in the room. So how many eyes? If you'll just raise your hand so I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we must have 11 in the room. Um, <laughs> on the S and N, how many S's? One. One S, two. Three, three S's, so that must mean eight N's, if my math is correct. It's called seven. So we're going to talk about that. Focus on the letter, not the word, because I'm going to talk about how 16 personalities is based on the same concepts, but different words. And I wanted to give you a free assessment that I thought was well done. Um, TF, how many T's? And how many J's? Six. <laughs> Love it. Six and five. So if we were going to think about our group type, we go by majority. So our group type is I, N, F, J. But on the JP, it's very close. <coughs> The other two are a little more clear. So before I go into the slides that describe the types a little bit more, yes, 16 personalities um, sort of took the Myers-Briggs and, and developed it in a, a slightly different direction. And you can read on the website about um, what they did. And they, they also have a fifth letter. Some You'll have a T or an A, and Myers-Briggs doesn't have that. Um, so like I said, this was just a, an assessment that's free, that I think is really well done, and it's easy to take, and I think it's fun to read through, and I'll talk at the end if you want to take the real Myers-Briggs, um, I, I can do that. So, I also borrowed the graphics from 16 Personalities, just because I think they're kind of fun. So, um, the, so where do you get your energy from? So introverts tend to like to get their energy from time by themselves. Um, they get exhausted by social interaction. And something I think is really important to remember, remember, this is about your preference, not about your skill. So an I can certainly talk in front of a large group of people or go to a, a 
John Legend concert and uh, enjoy it or, or whatnot. But afterward, they're definitely going to want time by themselves because it's working against their preferences. Um, where extroverts are energized by what's going on around them. And they like being with lots of different people. And, and they don't like time by themselves, typically. Um, it, you can even notice type in classes. Extroverts are much more likely to talk in class than introverts. Introverts t typically take time to think things through before they feel comfortable talking. I see some smiles and some nods, so I'm thinking that either that fits you or you know people that that fits or whatever. Um, and then they use different words. So in Myers-Briggs, they use the word sensing. Um, and they're very practical, pragmatic. Um, they focus on the here and now, what's going on right now, where introverts usually look at the big picture uh, we were talking about, you know, you might have a more philosophical conversation with an N, where you're going to have a more practical conversation with an S. Again, not right or wrong, just different. Um, the next preference is for how you make decisions. So thinkers use objectivity, rational thinking, um, logic. They don't really focus on feelings as much. Where feelers are sensitive and empathetic, and they want people to be getting along. You know, you know they value harmony. Um, and again, it, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. This is the only preference, at least in the US, I don't know about based in other cultures, where there is a male female difference. Can you guess which preference might have more females? Feeling. <laughs> Feeling, yes. So about 75% of women um, have the preference for deci deciding <coughs> the feeling lens, if you will. So obviously that means more men have the thinking preference for making decisions. And it's interesting when you, I think, when you meet a male whose preference is F, and then when you meet a woman whose preference is T, I actually worked with a woman who was a T, um, and the, the characteristics that you might typically think of belonging to a male or a female, you see them in this person, and it's a good way to think about diversity and gender stereotyping and, and, and all those kinds of things. Um, and then the final one, the final preference is kind of like how you organize life, how you navigate your world. So judges, planned, decisive, organized, structured, planful. You know, so as the three of us as Jays, for example, I put ours up here. Um, we probably know pretty much what we're doing all day until bedtime. And we probably even know roughly what time we're going to bed. Yes? What time? 7.30. 9 o'clock. I wish. It's, um, so P's, in Myers-Briggs, it's um, perceiving. They're more go with the flow. They like to improvise. Whatever happens, happens. If at 10.30, somebody calls and says, Hey, I'm starving. Do you want to go to wherever for a slice of pizza or whatever? They'll, yeah, sure, why not? Or, you know, hey, you want to drive up to the Finger Lakes this afternoon? It's a beautiful day, and I checked, and the leaves are gorgeous. Yeah, why not? Let's go. My friend asked me to go see the orchestra on Friday at 2 p.m. and said, no, I'm studying for one of three. <laughs> Perfect example. So again, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. And depending on the setting you're in, it can be helpful to hear from people with different perspectives. So that colleague I had, have, who is a T, she in a group discussion, actually she was the only T with three or four other Fs, she would often bring logical points into the conversation that would help us, you know, who wanted everybody to get along, um, to think about alternative perspectives on things. So that could be helpful. 
Um, the other thing is, as I reiterate the difference between preferences and behaviors, I had a peer advisor um, back in the day whose preference um, for navigating his world was P. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, P. But based on his, the way the job worked, he had to be at work at a certain time because he had appointments at a certain time. And he would set like double alarms and whatnot. And I wasn't the director at the time, and the director had a talk with him about, look, Rookie, if, if you want to continue to have this job, you got to step it up in this, he didn't use these words, but this behavior, you, you got to be here on time, or, or you're not going to have the job anymore. So he stepped it up, and he was at work on time even though his preference would have been to come in whenever you know, woke up and felt like it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at type in action. So you've gotten um, kind of the broad overviews of the preferences. Now we're going to try them out in groups. So for the first group, um, I'll tell you the, what you're going to do in a moment. Um, so I want the Four E's to sit in this row, and maybe, I don't know, two on the side or something like that. So, which one are you? I should have asked. Are you an E or an I? I. You're an I. What are you guys? E. E. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Let's, whoever the fourth E is, why don't you go over there? And then we'll have the I's. If you can maybe sit on both sides of the table. Um, and you might want to swing to the other side, so you, or you could face each other. Whatever, whatever works for you guys. So all the eyes over here, and, I'll, and the E's over there, and then I'll give you your task. And then you, Fong, you want to hang with this group? Since you're already on that side, and Allison on this side. Yeah. So you, Fong, and Allison are just going to help facilitate. They are not going to give you, you know, answers or clues or tips or whatever. And something to keep in mind: there is no right and wrong to this. So just respond to the task in the way you naturally would, um, and then you're each going to report out. So we hopefully will be able to see the differences between the two groups. So, here is your task. Plan the perfect party. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you about five minutes. <laughs> okay, so five, five minutes is up. So, um, I'm, I'm going to go in order of how they are on the board. So E group, tell us about your party. And so and listen both for content and process. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Tell us about your party. So when we're gonna have the party earlier. Uh, we will have the party on Friday. Yeah. Friday. And okay. then it will end until midnight. And it will go till midnight, <laughs> okay? Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> and probably we have warm activ activities, activities okay. with a group and as individual activities. Group activities and individual activities, cool. And okay. activities can be diversified. For example, watch a movie through a projector, play, play card games, okay. drinking games. <laughs> <laughs> responsible drinking games. Okay, <laughs> like tea tasting or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> Poker. 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 Yeah. Cards and dice. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. What else? By the way, I want to add something. It is everybody bring their own food. It is called potluck. So, a, a word they learn. Do you know potluck? So, it comes from, like in a group, I bring a pot to the party with some uh, food that I've made. And Allison brings a pot with something else, and you bring a pot, and then it's a surprise what's in there. So it's either good luck, you like it, or bad luck, you don't like it. 
at one of my family gatherings, actually family where that one family is always late, often there are two or three pots of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so, you know, ideally you want different things, but anyway, okay, go ahead. Uh, and now, how many people are going to invite? We would only probably also many, because yeah. we want that everyone will enjoy the participant. Okay. We don't want small groups. You don't want small groups, so, you, okay. Uh, everyone. By the way, it is a dog party. It is a what party? Dog party. Dog party. Dorm. 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 Oh, dog party, okay. Oh, so, so in a residence hall? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we will choose someone's home with a big kitchen and a big living room and come for sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Okay. Anything else about your party? Yeah, pretty much it. Okay. Okay. That's it. okay. Yeah. All right. So now let's hear about the I party. Tell us about your party. <laughs> you made a list. Made a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we kind of went through. between the E party and the I party. We'll talk about the parties and then we'll talk about the process. What did you notice that was different? Oh, no, we're going to talk about that later. Hold that thought. Oh, and then the A different thought. The okay, party. go ahead. And the I part, uh, no, the E party has a lot of uh, like games, like card games and Mm -hmm. Lots of activities. Yeah. yeah. What else did you notice that was different? Between the two groups. Like I feel they are very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. You can't talk. It's all to me. You're a facilitator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's an eye, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What else do you notice between the differences? Ease, what did you notice about the I party? Did they think about the music type? Or the music uh -huh. things, or the one to provide like, like, their like, guests? <coughs> Very detailed. Very detailed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else do you notice? Maybe in the party, people get to know each other's We are all familiar with each other. Ah, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Right. So this group invited people they already knew. Mm -hmm. You guys invited lots of people and planned activities so you could get to know each other. Ah. What else? Anything else you notice? All right, now let's talk about the process. So were there any things you noticed about the way your group planned the party or how the other group was planning their party? Okay. <laughs> I found that uh, like the, even the group of uh, extroverts are fewer than the group of introverts, but they are like, much more louder. <laughs> yes, so the extroverted group, even though there's fewer of them, were louder than the I group. The other note I wrote down re related to that, they started talking before you guys did. And, and many times they were all talking at the same time, and with you it was like one. <laughs> <laughs> 
at that time. <laughs> what else did you notice? Yeah. I group was more one at a time, and you know, what do you think? And yep, definitely. Good. What else? Yeah. And the I group made a list, which surprised me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the I group made a list. And one of the things that's hard, Alice and I were talking about this earlier, in some ways it's not fair to look at the preferences separately because all of the preferences influence each other. Um, so, but, but yes, they were very focused, they made their list. Anything else? Yeah, a little more detached from it. Yep. We're more excited about. It feels like we're really good to have a party this <laughs> this group was definitely more excited and you could see their energy or hear their energy more. Again, it's not judging, it's just explaining. It's different. Anything else? Okay, so now we're going to divide by S and N. So just curious, how many in this group are Ns? One, two, three. Uh, this one, intuitive. Sorry, intuitive, right. In this one, it's intuitive and observant. So how many intuitives on this group? Just, yeah, just three. So there must be more over there. So how about if the ends from this group go over there, and then the S's, the observants come here. So this one should be a smaller group and that one will be a bigger group. And then I'll give you your task. Are you all intuitives? So here is end. All intuitives. Okay, so all intuitives are there. Pull up chairs, whatever you need to do. And all observants are here. So also are there people that have the same kind of oh. sort of that they can kind of travel with you for each group? So oh, cool. Are all either yeah. 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 Okay. Are you ready are you ready for your task? Oh, oh, well, wait a minute. Another observant, Jay. Okay. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, are you ready for your task? I was going to try to remember to bring this object with me. Um, describe this object. <laughs> describe this object. And try not to listen to each other if you can. Them. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. So describe this object. You got five minutes. If you need it. Are you guys done or do you need a little more time? I think yeah. You guys are done. Okay, great. So um I'm going to go with the observant, the S group first. So S group, will you describe this object for us? Uh, maybe it's an apple. <laughs> maybe it's an apple. You guys, you have to listen. Listen to what they're saying. It's a photo of the lemon. It's a photo of the lemon, and it's red. It's color. It also has shadow on the, uh, on the 
because it's shiny and it's too uh, unrealistic to be too perfect and it seems unrealistic. Uh, it's wrong in the shape and it, it looks fresh. But it is just been taken out from the tree, and it has a short stem on the top too, and it's not real because it's just too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this that everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Now, intuitives, describe this object for us. Everything that you said about what this object is. I remember uh, it's very smooth. It's very smooth. Shiny. Shiny. And remember someone said it smells good. It smells good. <laughs> Maybe tastes good too. Maybe tastes good too. I think it's too, too good to be true. Too good to be true. What else? I heard some other things that you said that you should share. Uh, it's a round and apple with a leaf on its top. The leaf just looks like very artificial. The leaf looks very artificial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mentioned that it looks like a supermarket apple. It just looks um, like something that got picked and got stored away. It looks, it has a uh, like shine, so you can tell that it's it's been processed and mm -hmm. not coming from an orchard. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like that perfect image. What else? It looks like it has been photoshopped. Looks like it's been photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. What else? The color is so blue. Mm -hmm. um, so it is kind of like poisonous. <laughs> it looks like a poisonous apple. Yeah. Good. I was hoping like you were going to say. Like the one given to Snow White. Like the one given to Snow White. Anything else? works. Okay, so what do, what do you notice are the diff or what do you notice about the differences between the observant description of the apple and the intuitive description of the apple? Yeah. Uh, they observe it very carefully. For example, they even notice the shadow with the, with the top of it. Very specific. Yes, short. Yep. Because yeah, I just think the shadow is must have a shadow, so I just ignore it. Oh, yeah, sure. What else? Yeah. I kind of feel their expression is more, it's imagination, like it's not one thing, and nobody like ever imagined that it ever grew. Yes, more imaginative, where this group is very factual. I think they're being very objective and weird being subjective. Objective and subjective, yep. What else? Since I'm teaching, I was thinking, how do they know that? Yeah. <laughs> right? The S is like, how do you know that? They don't. They're, you know, big pig. They're thinking, oh, it must be. What else? Yeah. 
you were you were telling a story in a way about where this apple came from. And yet, how do you know? <laughs> and it's not that it's wrong. It's just different. Anything you had to add? I just think that we our group was kind of dwelling on the fact that it was not real. And it, it was very like practical. It's like this isn't real. <laughs> like and, and because of that barrier we weren't able to think more about it. Yep. Sometimes when I remember, I will bring an actual apple because um, it makes it a little different. Anything else about that? Okay, so now we're going to split by thinking and feeling. Um, how many of you are thinking? One, two. How many are thinking over there? I mean, not thinking. Thinking preference. <laughs> so it wants to be two. So why don't we have the T's over here? So and then why don't we have the F's over here? And I will give you the task. So here the F. F T. Feeling, thinking. There, next to where you are. Thank you. There's apparently two other T's. And I could have counted wrong. Thinking, feeling. So many Okay, so I so I counted wrong. So there's only two T's, two thinkers. It's the third letter. The third one. Thinking, feeling. We're all F here, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I think we'll just so, wow. <laughs> two and nine. Okay. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. That is. Okay. So I'm going to read you your <coughs> back, um, a little story and then tell you your task. Um, you are hiring someone for a job. One candidate had a perfect resume and interview. The other candidate was not as outstanding as the first. However, the second candidate is a single parent and really needs a job. You can only hire one person. Who do you hire and why? Now, one thing you guys might want to do because you're such a big group, Maybe you want to have two small group discussions and then come together. I also am concerned I don't want you guys influencing them. Uh, but whatever you think. Okay, so and if you guys can talk a little. Because there's no right or So who would you hire? Not that good. Okay, I'm going to have you stop only because there's one more reference um, and we're getting close to the end of our time already. So, um, let's hear from the T group. Um, who did you decide to hire and why? We have different opinions. You have different opinions. <laughs> Excellent. Great. So, my opinion is definitely we should hire the perfect candidate. Okay. First of all, it is, it is our company. Not that charitable department. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I'm not saying I'm a co-person, but there's still other ways to express my sympathy and empathy. Mm -hmm. But apart from being professional. Yeah. Great. If this is a position, and we want the best of the best. Mm -hmm. so really. Great. Excellent. Do you want to explain what you're Yes. I think if she is a single mother, I will uh, choose her because uh, According to your description, I don't think uh, the woman is unqualified to this position. Maybe she's just not so good to be just uh, fit perfectly into the position uh -huh. and we should. Uh, if she only needs this opportunity and you help her at this moment, maybe she will make more contribution in the future because at that time you give her this opportunity. and. Uh, she felt that uh, you, she, uh, out of this reason, she will work more harder, maybe then. Mm -hmm. But do you want to say what you said if it was not a single mother? 
Yeah, if she is not a single mother, and I will only consider their uh, abilities, I will choose the perfect. Okay. Like if it's a single dad, she would go with the perfect. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, well, hold that thought because we're going to totally come back to that too. Okay, so our um, feelers got divided into two groups just by sheer size. What did this group, who did this group decide to hire? The first one. Why? <coughs> You want to make a profit. But you had one dissenter. Uh, at first, I think I should give the job to the, uh, to the single mother or dad. Because I think uh, she, uh, I think the perfect one uh, could find a job at other places that this. Uh, but, I, but, if I, um, uh, <laughs> uh, but if I were the employer, I should give the job to the uh, less advantageous one. Because uh, I think she needs need it, and I have to make some efforts to save her. Oh, efforts to save her. Okay, good. All of it. Good. Yes. How about this group? Um, you couldn't really decide which one. You couldn't decide. Yeah. Okay. We just, like you said, that there are so many different, like, things that we need to take into consideration. So for example, like I was like, saying similar to that, like um, for the first one, like whether the person has another opportunity to work in other forms, like, um, like consider other applications. And if the second like single mom really is like very urgent in this job and they have like a similar kind of quality, we would consider like the second mom. Yeah, but, like they were saying to me. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, a resume doesn't really talk a lot about attitude, so you would have to meet with both to get a sense of who's more, who would be more committed or eager or um, excited about being there. I think those things would mm -hmm. matter more or have a place besides the resume. And what is a perfect resume? Like, um, is it like um, your place where you went to school? Or, I mean, what is it? It's basically how you present yourself. Excellent. Great. So, what do you notice about the hiring process, so to speak? The differences. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little something for the moment. This group was a little more T in their decision making except for you. You were a little more F in your decision making. This group had a hard time, I think, because they were thinking about F-related things and T-related things. And one of the things that's interesting to me about this group, you classic T, classic <laughs> T. And so it was interesting that you were sort of approaching it in a slightly different way, and as a T, you, you sort of thought you didn't have all the facts to really be able to make the best decision. Um, so anything else that you noticed? Sorry, I sort of jumped in and did it for you. I apologize. I guess because I'm focused on time. Because I'm a J. OK, so now diversity moment. There's something else you all mostly did um, in this little task, and I wonder if you noticed what it was. I'm not really giving you very good hints, am I? Because I'm an M. Or I'm just going to tell you in the interest of time. I'm going to read it to you again. You're hiring someone for a job. One candidate had a perfect resume and interview. The other candidate was not as outstanding as the first. However, the second candidate is a single parent and really needs a job. You can only hire one person. Who do you hire and why? I emphasized a word in particular, two words in particular. Parent. How did most of you with articles refer to the parent? 
Most of you said mother, she. Although you said, interestingly, if it was dad, I don't remember which one you said. So isn't it interesting, thinking of diversity, that you assumed the single parent was a mother? I have a very dear female friend whose husband was a single dad for a very long time before she met him. So in many situations, there's all kinds of diversity issues that you might not be thinking about that you need to be aware of. I see some. All right, so I'll tell you what. Because we, in the interest of time, we got about three minutes left. The final task would have been um, J and P plan a summer long trip to Europe. And, and so you can imagine the J group is all about, well, how long are we going? And how much money are we going to have? And let's plan a schedule. <coughs> what countries do we want to see? How long do we want to stay? What's the weather going to be like so we know what to pack? The P's are going to be more like, that's a great idea. When do you think we should go? Now? Great. I'm exaggerating a little bit. but So this group is going to be very planful, and this group is going to be a little more spontaneous about it. Um, some questions. Why do you think, uh, or why do you think, oh, I didn't do this right. Why do you think personality and can be helpful in uh, choosing a career path? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing, I think it's a little bit different. Like standard personality types corresponding to different jobs. Is that so? So, what's interesting is he's thinking there should be standard types for each path. There are often stereotypical, like you'll see a lot of this type in certain jobs, and you know, lots of the other type in other jobs. But what's interesting is anybody of any type can be drawn to a job um, for different reasons. So like in career development, I had a colleague, I have a colleague who is an ISFJ. And what she loved about her work, she was in charge of our career library. And she loved researching and finding the best deal and figuring out what else we needed. That drove me crazy. I was so glad that she was happy to do it. I wanted to look at the bigger picture of things. So, um, OK, what else? How do you think you can consider your preferences when exploring options? Sure. So if the job doesn't quite fit your personality or the environment, ooh, am I going to be happy there long term? Any other thoughts about that one? And again, in, I would say in probe you more and whatnot, but we don't have any time left. Um, and here are some resources that can help you with figuring out how your path might align with your preferences. Another thing to think about too, like, like the peer advisor, Rohit, for the job, he acted like a J, but his preference was a P. Similarly, if there's things about a job you really, really love, you might be willing to behave against your type, if you will. Um, so what's next? If you like, you do have the ability to take the official Myers-Briggs. So I just have to figure out from Yu Hong, she's got the um, program where you can do it, um, the real one. But you can schedule an appointment with one of us. I will, I'll talk to her about that. And you schedule appointments with us through, except for Yu Hong, through Handshake. And even if you don't want to take the full one and you just want to talk more about your preferences and your career search and all that, we can do that too. Allison and Yufang, do you want to add anything? Um, 
just going back to a little bit of what we were just touching on, I think um, something that's super important is seeing if you would get joy out of the things that you're doing on the job. Um, I know I was in a previous career in marketing, and most of my days I spent in front of a computer screen, not talking to anyone, and I'm an E. And so sitting behind a computer screen did not bring me joy all day. <laughs> so moving towards something where I'm able to interact with people, and that's kind of where I get energy from and all of that. So when you are looking at job descriptions, just ask yourself those questions. I think that's really helpful. And the other thing to think about is for Allison, let's say she loved marketing, Maybe that wasn't the right organization for her to be working with. So maybe there was a different organization where people did interact more and it would be a better fit for her. Yep. She happened to decide that, yeah, you know what, marketing isn't right for me. Right. Although interestingly, ENFJs are often found in marketing. That's why I went towards it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and I think networking is a really good tool because you can actually ask people at companies sort of what a typical day is like. You know, tell me about some things that you do. Because, again, what Amy was saying, maybe at a different organization, people aren't behind their computer screens. They're in meetings, and they're talking, and they're brainstorming. Um, so, yeah, I encourage everyone to chat with people and get a little bit of real life advice. Which is going to be much more comfortable for the E's in the room than the I's in the room. But we can help with that. Yes. Anything else before we? Um, To a frontline teacher, yes. um, I I don't I I have that information in my office. What do you think? What do you think a typical teacher would be? E T. E and a T. Uh -huh. Or do you mean the character E T from the movie? <laughs> <laughs> he was a good teacher in a different way. Yeah. So one guess is E and T. Any other guesses about what a stereotypical teacher might be? J. Yeah. J. Probably M. So then what's really interesting to think about too is teaching at an elementary school versus a high school versus a college or university. So I think at like elementary and middle school and high school, they're more S. They're more task oriented and more F. At universities, professors tend to be I. Hmm, I, I can't remember about the other one. But think about a professor's work. A lot of a professor's work is very individual. They're doing their research, they're writing their papers, they're preparing for class. They're standing in front of class, and depending on their style, they might not really be interacting with you that much. They, and again, not judging, just saying. I think one interesting example of an I, um, in like changing your behavior, despite it not necessarily aligning with your preferences. Do any of you know Ann T. Allen? She's higher ed, but um, she's also the associate dean of student services. So everyone is. And professor. Her. And professor. And a lot of her work is, um, you know, behaviorally extroverted because she's giving presentations and she's leading classes, but she's an introvert. So that's a good example of just because you're in a box doesn't mean that you can't push yourself to do other things. And that brings up a good point too. It's not fair to type other people because you can't see what's going on inside of them and you don't know their experience. You could make some guesses over time, um, but it's not fair to type other people. And this is not the only way to understand yourself. This is just one assessment of one set of criteria. Um, you can believe it, not believe it, find it helpful, think it's dumb, whatever. Is it? Yeah, you find yeah. Um, I just feel like this task should not limit you when you choose your career or any job. It should not limit you. But it's just like a resource to help you understand yourself. So if you have a final understanding about yourself, when you look into the job description, you got to find a better idea whether you will like it or not. It just wants to help you, but it should not limit you. So some work that might be included um, 
a lot of people that's more extrovert, but you are you, your test results like introvert and you are really interested and I and I would encourage you to try it out because through the process you'll get more about yourself and the job. So it should not limit you but you just like try and sometimes just um, I think that networking is helpful. I, I'm an introvert but I always um, encourage myself, say oh if I could make it like to talk with one stranger today with, in, the, in the party, then it's the greatest achievement like through all this month. And just <laughs> like this, you know, the greatest <laughs> achievement like introvert, like, you know. So just like talk with people and hear about their life stories, even if like you don't get any advice or suggestions or anything, but like hearing other stories will like as like inspiration to yourself when you plan like, oh, he's doing something or she's doing something and that's cool and also she she also faced the problems that I also face as well. So you are not alone and you feel like oh somebody is like along your side and somebody know what you are going to do. So just like hearing other stories could give you a lot of like hint and also um, it's, it's very good resources to help yourself grow I mean in the long term. So yeah, that's why. So I love that. That's so classic I. If I could challenge myself to talk to one stranger <laughs> That'd be my goal for the month. Yeah, that's it. Where an extrovert might say, oh man, I hope, well, and also J and P, you don't know, ext extrovert, oh wow, I hope I meet lots of people at this party that I can talk to today, and then wow, tomorrow I'm doing this, so maybe I'll find some other people I can talk to. Yeah. So, great. All of it's great. We could talk, I could talk all afternoon about it, but you've got yeah. other things to do, I'm sure. So. Yeah, if you come and see us, there are other things that we can um, do with you, like other assessments and whatnot, so. Great. Thank you very much for coming today. And you'll get a follow-up email, so make sure that you sign the sheet. And we love your feedback. Um,